everyone welcome back to another video so in today's video I plan to do my 28 week pregnancy update um, and basically my 28 week doctor's appointment slash ultrasound update so before we get further into this video I'm gonna insert a clip here it's basically my live glucose test which I had done last Wednesday today is Tuesday and I had my appointment yesterday so I'm gonna insert this clip here and we'll watch that and then we'll jump right back into the video about my 28 week appointment hey everyone <coughs> to my channel. So today I figured I'd insert this clip because I'm about to go do my glucose test. And so I am about to drink this. I don't remember this being terrible with my first. I actually enjoyed it. Um, and I don't remember if I got the lemon lime or the orange flavor. But either way, we're gonna do live taste test. This is the orange and I'm gonna set my timer for five minutes because I have to finish it in the five minute frame. So let's get started. So it's not bad at all. It's very sweet as 50 grams of sugar. So not bad though. I'll get back to you when I actually finish the whole thing and let you know. Okay, so I just finished it. I have a minute to spare. Honestly, it's not that bad um, at all. I feel like people are a bit dramatic about it. It kind of does like get a little like bitter tasting toward the end because it is so sweet and I'm so full from drinking so much of it but it's honestly not bad at all guys like it's so doable and so now I have to go I have an hour to my blood drawn and I'll update you guys with the results in the next clip okay so you guys just saw my glucose test so I have the results for that which I will get into the video and I will update you on what my results were um, but I also do want to just say that the glucose test is not that bad um, I've never done the three hour one yet or I've never done the three hour um, so I don't know if that's like much worse but the one hour glucose test is honestly not that bad the drink tastes like an orange soda without the carbonation it is a little too sweet toward the end but it's so doable and don't be afraid if you have to do it um so let's jump into the pregnancy update because i have quite a few things to go over and this is also kind of going to be somewhat related back to having a bicornuate uterus and if you watched any of my earlier pregnancy updates you will know that i had a lot of issues in my first trimester so now that i'm officially in my third trimester let's jump in to my updates first things first is i did pass my glucose test um, i was super relieved because i was so nervous um, to not have passed it and i guess it has to do mostly because i've been craving sweets so much this pregnancy and i know a lot of it is genetic and i know a lot of it is based on family history um, but nonetheless i was super nervous because i have just had a sweet tooth I passed it and so my number was 105 and with my doctor if it's under 135 um, you are in the clear so I was well below that number um, so in my appointment yesterday I first had my ultrasound and my appointment after and the reason why I'm getting ultrasounds now every four weeks is due to my bicornuate uterus and they basically monitor for growth and IUGR which is um, what I had with my first one and that stands for intrauterine growth restriction so that's very common in people with bicornuate uteruses because the baby has only basically half a side to grow in and so it sometimes can make the baby smaller so my ultrasound looked relatively well um, considering this is what this was like my first growth scan so there was nothing much that they could compare it to I go back at 32 weeks now and then they'll have something to compare it to from the 28 week to the 32 but basically the baby was measuring a week behind so it was about 27 weeks 
um, and it put it at like a 10 to 12 percent like 10 to the 12th percentile for measurements um, so it is a small baby right now and it weighs approximately they said two pounds and ten ounces but as far as measuring like the femur and the belly and all that the baby was kind of on average measuring a week behind as far as the body but the head was actually measuring like five weeks ahead so the head was measuring at 33 weeks um, which puts it above the 99th percentile so I'm hoping that either means that the body will catch up to the head or I don't really know what else I can hope for <laughs> other than that. I'm not, I didn't have this with my first one, so I'm not really sure why the head is so large. Um, everything as far as the scan looked good, so I'm assuming that there's no issues or anything wrong with like the brain or the head or anything like that. But yeah, that's just basically the synopsis of how big the baby was and what it was measuring at and the percentiles for that. And also the baby was head down, which is great news um, for most pregnant people. But for me, um, because of my bicornuate uterus, I am less likely to have a vaginal delivery just because um, of the stress that it could put on the baby and having irregular contractions because of the uterus not contracting properly. Women with bicornuate uteruses end up delivering earlier because of intrauterine growth restriction, which is kind of what I talked about a little bit. So you can't have a vaginal birth unless you are induced or you go into, neighbor, into labor naturally, which is less likely for me to happen because induction can stress the baby too much with a bicornuate uterus. So they basically, my doctor said that they typically don't advise that. And then at the end of um, our conversation, she said that they would be scheduling me a C-section at least for 39 weeks. So I wouldn't go past 39 weeks, which means that I'm less likely to go into labor. Um, I don't know why I keep saying neighbor. I'm trying to say like, labor naturally and it's coming out as neighbor. Um, so that's kind of the situation there. So um, the baby also had a full bladder which was funny because she was like oh that's the bladder right there and it was like a lot of just like black and I was like oh wow like baby's really gotta go and she's like yeah but that's a good sign the kidneys are working and all this so it was just funny that the baby like hadn't relieved itself yet so the bladder was like super full after that I basically went into my doctor's appointment and they kind of confirmed that the ultrasound re looked relatively good. Um, there's nothing to be too concerned about as of now. And that is when I basically, we went and talked about like any concerns, any issues. Um, and during this appointment, I also got my ro another Rogam shot. If you're not familiar with a Rogam shot, it's basically when you're O negative and the baby is positive for the blood type, so then I don't build antibodies against the baby, if that makes sense. So a Rogam shot alleviates that during delivery and stuff. And then basically she just told me that my glucose test came back good and my blood pressure looks good, my weight looks good, like there was no concerns whatsoever as far as me or the baby in general. Uh, but then, this is kind of where things went a little south um, or unexpected. They listened to the heartbeat at the ultrasound, or they just like played a little clip of it, and it was 137 beats per minute, which is very normal, very standard. There was like um, no concern with that whatsoever. When I went into my appointment, um, the nurse practitioner ended up doing just a Doppler on my belly just to hear the heart rate and just kind of to listen to it for a little while. And apparently she didn't like what she heard because the heart rate dropped to 115 at one point. And she was certain that that was not my heart rate, so it wasn't picking up my um, pulse. So she got a little nervous uh, because she wasn't sure what the baseline for the baby was. So basically, after that, it kind of became a little chaotic because now you're they weren't happy with how the baby's heart was beating. So she ended up having me go in to get a stress test 
Um, they also call it the NST test. If you are not familiar with that, it's basically where they hook you up to a monitor and they put like a thing around your belly. It's kind of like a, a machine that also like if you've seen like the contraction machines, that type of thing. It basically monitors the baby's heart rate and if you have any kind of contractions at any point. Obviously, I'm not having contractions at this point. Um, I'm not having even Braxton Hicks really, only occasionally, but at the time of the appointment I wasn't having contractions or Braxton Hicks or anything of that sort. So they hooked me up to the monitor and I was probably there for 30 minutes just on the screen and basically they leave you in a room by yourself and they just have you listen, they just listen to the baby's heart rate repeatedly. hit a button and it comes up on the chart that I felt movement um, so the baby's heart rate was averaging like in the 120s 130s and then a couple times it had dropped to like the 80s um, which as soon as I saw the heart rate drop to the 80s obviously my heart rate spiked and occasionally it was almost like with the baby moving and stuff it seemed as if the monitor that was on my belly as the baby moved started to pick up on my heart rate because I started I was like in the 90s by the point where the first time I felt I heard the baby's heart rate dropped to like 89 and I was like that's not good because I had a similar situation happen with my first one and I had to be um taken to labor and delivery and we literally had her that night so I was super like nervous and anxious because obviously I'm only 28 weeks like I am not like this baby's not ready to be born pretty certain that a couple times it was the baby's heart rate I was in the room so I kind of know like the, like it went down and it would go back up normal again so like it wasn't like randomly picking up on mine for a split second and then just like going back to like a baby's heart rate which is a bit higher than a normal adult but the nurse practitioner did end up coming in she kind of looked over it and she said that she was fairly happy with what she was seeing because there was a good amount of movement like the baby was pretty active that whole 30 minutes um, and also the there were like spikes which i guess they like to see a fluctuation they don't want to just see like a flat line because then that means the baby's like not very active or doing anything at all which can almost mean that the baby's in more stress so they basically sent me home um and they were going to give the results to my actual doctor because she was in a procedure so she wasn't in at the moment to look it over herself and they said that they would call me if they were concerned or if anything was wrong. Um, I have not gotten a call back, so I'm assuming either everything looks, they're like content with everything. I was super bummed, like it was, I like I cried multiple times yesterday just because I was, it just hit like too close to home with my first one because my first one, it was basically the stress test that sent us to the hospital and there were obviously a lot of other complications that came along with that but I was also further along, I was 36 weeks. It really made me realize I really need to get things together in this home. I and mean, I think with the second baby everyone's like that, like you just feel like you don't, you'll wait till the last minute to get everything done and I think this was like a kick in the butt to be like okay well anything can happen at any moment in time especially because I have a history of it with my first one and I do have a bicorneate uterus so you're more likely to face more issues in the third trimester as far as the, the baby's growth and development and everything like that. For my next appointment is at 32 weeks um, which is going to be the ultrasound and the appointment like a doctor's appointment again. I do want to say that 
Um, I did go to the store today and I bought these cute swaddles. I think they're so pretty. Um, they're like a little green with a little animal and stuff on it. I think they're so adorable. And I was kind of excited because we are not finding out the gender. So um, I kind of have to get a few more like gender neutral things. And we love greens and stuff. Like greens are one of our favorite colors. So I decided to just get that. Yeah, so that's kind of my update. Um... I hope this it's not too sad or depressing because it really isn't like so far the baby looks good it just made me realize that things can happen a lot sooner than expected so I hope you guys enjoyed this video here's my little bump she said I am measuring um, she said I am measuring at 28 weeks basically like my this part is measuring right on track so the baby is measuring or the belly's measuring right on pace with the 28 week mark so i love you guys thank you for watching this video i hope it's not too long but i did want to just update you guys on everything and i will see you in my next update